What is going on here, man? For the gang, welcome to another WWE Money in the Bank 2023 late reviews and reactions with Havy Infinite. Obviously, today I'm going to be breaking down first the reviews and giving my reactions at the very end of the video to each match from start to finish. This pay per view was yesterday on July the 1st at 3 p.m. and I believe 2 p.m. for the kickoff, I think it was, or was it was it 1 p.m. or something, 2 2 some 2 something like that. But uh, this pay per view was obviously in the UK. Um, I would talk about every match from start to finish. I do the reading. Um, Damian Priest defeated uh, um, Logan Paul, Shinsuke Nakamura, Ricochet, Santos Escobar, Butch, and LA Knight to become senior money in the bank. Senior money in the bank. The judgments with the reign of terror just uh, became even more dangerous as Damian Priest scabbed the letter to become senior money in the bank. Granting himself a, a future championship match whenever he chooses. Obviously, the, uh, the action was chaos uh, as uh, every superstar battled for themselves, but not before they teamed up to teach uh, Logan Paul a click lesson in respect with the ladder and tables, ladders and tables structurally placed throughout the ring and ringside area. The crunch was taken to a whole nother, whole new level to when Ricochet hit a Spanish fly on Logan Paul from the top rope through a uh, pair of tables which uh, was just moments after he drove uh, through a ladder dived through a ladder and the ropes at the same time to take out a pawn I think components or opponents or something like that. I'm going to say opponents at ringside because I believe there was opponents at ringside or something like that, but he was taking out opponents on ringside with everyone uh, selling down and, and out. LA Knight looked destined to win, but Priest... Rapidly and so something, uh, I don't know what that means, uh, and hit a broken arrow from off the top of the ladder before climbing down, climbing back up. Why well, I say climbing down? I mean climbing back up and unhooking, unhooking the briefcase, delivering him covered contact so pretty much right there Damian Priest is your new money in the bank uh winner obviously um he's the money in the bank winner uh, a lot of people didn't really want Damian Priest to win some people said they wanted LA not to win I picked uh obviously I picked Damian Priest as one of my winners and my second winner was uh LA Knight but Obviously, there was only one that could win. Pretty much, it was Damian Priest. I'm not mad about that winner. I think that's a great winner for this Money in the Bank pay-per-view. Obviously, there's videos here I wish I could show. But, as you can see, it was chaotic. It was very chaotic. You don't get me started about what happened with the last match. Uh, um, this was an unexpectedly unexpected to happen. So, we had Liv Morgan, burst, Liv Morgan and Rhea Ripley who take... The women's tag team champions from Ronda Rousey and Shannon Baszler to win the women's tag team championships. So what happened during the match? Something unexpected happened. Like like uh, Liv Morgan and Ronda Rousey won the 
women's tag team champions. I just read that from Ronda Rousey and Shayna Baszler to recapture the goal. They never were defeated for. It. So obviously, what happened there? You see Ronda Rousey locking, uh, doing an ankle lock on Liv Morgan, pretty much. And it's and then right here you see uh the champion looked like they were going to retain after Baszler counted uh captured uh Morgan's attempt at so this this is our finisher move. I I know what it's called. It's uh but after Rousey uh tap uh tapped in, Baszler snapped and ruthlessly attacked her tag team partner. I'm so right here, you can see that she attacked uh, Ronda Rousey. Pretty much, you can see that right there. And, um, after Baszler left, Ron, uh, Ronda was sitting duck, following a te Texan, Texans, uh, some, something bone. From uh, Rodriguez, Morgan nailed her finisher move as she finished as as she and uh, Rodriguez once again became women's tag team champions. Obviously. Um, Shannon Baszler and Ronda Rousey are not a thing anymore, as you can pretty much see by the picture. Um, so Shayna left the match, and Ronda was sitting in the middle of the ring. Pretty much, uh, we have uh, Raquel climb up to the top rope, and she does her move off the top rope, and then we have Lib do, do her friendship move, and then. She pins Ronda Rousey one two three, and then we have new women's tag team champions right there. Um, I'm not surprised about it, and um, I was thinking that they were going to turn on each other very soon. And it happened to be live. It happened to be Shanna that turns on Ronda. That's crazy. And then, as you can see in the picture, I'm gonna get to this part. I'm gonna get to this part after. I'm gonna get to that part of him coming back. So, uh, Intercontinental Champion Gunter defeated Matt Riddle. Yeah, submission. Drew McIntyre made his earth shattering return and laid out Gunter. Obviously, he laid out Gunter on his return. I'm very happy to see the return of Drew McIntyre himself. Wasn't bad to see him come back. And then we have Gunter extend, extend his legendary Intercontinental Champion reign as defeating Matt Riddle via uh, submission at Money in the Bank. Riddle was formerly of an opponent as anyone Gunter has faced due to his MMA background, but his position and strike was where meant with pure Brutally from here, brutal. I can't talk. Brutally, brutally from the chap. It, it pretty much, if you don't know, Gunster is brutal. Obviously, he does his chops. He likes to injure people, and we have the return of Drew McIntyre. Obviously, laid out Gunter. Making it clear that he's going to face Gunter at SummerSlam Detroit on August 5th. Obviously. And then we have Gunter structurally, uh, strateg strategically attacked Riddle's already injured ankle, but Riddle fought viciously. Even locking in a triangle. Unfortunately for Riddle, the champ kept trashing, trashed 
Uh, trenching his knee, his ankle, and finally forced the original road to tap out. Obviously, I already knew that Red was going to be tapped out anyway. I knew that Gunter was already too much for Riddle to handle. Obviously, with the return of uh, Drew McIntyre, this is good for Drew McIntyre to come back. After the after the match, Drew McIntyre explored back onto the scene for the first time since WrestleMania 39, receiving a deserving ovation from the WWE Universe and confronting Gunter in the middle of the ring after Gunter pie faced the formal WWE champion. McIntyre responded with a Glasgow kiss and a Claymore that sent the crowd into a frenzy. Obviously, I'm happy to see Drew McIntyre come uh, back, and it's it's great for his career to be back. And obviously, what this means is we're gonna get a match between him and Gunter at the next pay per view, SummerSlam. Obviously, it's it's the next pay per view in August. So, um, moving on to the next match, we have. And I'm happy that Gunter retained his championship. And I'm also happy that we will get to see Drew McIntyre versus Gunter versus Drew McIntyre for the Intercontinental kind of Championship at obviously SummerSlam Detroit. Obviously. So next we have Cody Rhodes defeating uh, Dominic Mysterio, the son of Rey Mysterio. Obviously. The American Nightmare the American Nightmare Cody Rhodes uh, took um Fought or took in, took in Drew McIntyre, uh, taught. I say Drew McIntyre, taught Dominic Mysterio a lesson by defeating the Judgment Day star in convicting fashion. Conviction, con I don't know. But obviously, you already know that. I already know that this match was going to be like that. Some people were saying that Brock was going to come back, but obviously Brock didn't really come back. He was he was scheduled to come back, but unfortunately that wasn't going to happen. But obviously we had uh, Mysterio try to play mind games uh, and even attack the injured the injured arm of uh, Rhodes by ripping off the cast, but. Rhodes remained undetected and kept uh, villainous women's world champion Rhea Ripley at bay after counting Mysterio's attempt at the Mysterio's attempt at the three Amigo, Amigos uh, suplexes. Rhodes nails a disaster kick. Cody Cutter and a crossroads to walk the Victoria victory. Obviously, Cody Rhodes got the victory right there. We already know he was going to hit the crossroads and win the match. I already knew he was going to win. Some people were saying Brock was going to come out. There was no Brock Lesnar, just to let you know. I watched this pay-per-view, obviously, when I was out and about, and I watched it a little bit when I got home, pretty much. Did fall asleep in between it, um, between, like, the main event or close to the main events. I don't really remember. So we had to return to John Cena. John Cena returned to give WrestleMania respect to London and an attitude adjustment to... Grayson Waller. So he returned to say on the mic that we need a WrestleMania in London. But Grayson Waller came out and interfered with John Cena and told him that we need a WrestleMania in Australia. Obviously, I think both of those locations are really cool to have a WrestleMania at. Like, I think we should have a WrestleMania at both of those locations in the future. Australia wouldn't be bad. 
UK wouldn't be bad either. So came out there and he was talking to Grayson Waller. Grayson Waller was saying he's happy to meet the legendary John Cena and then attacks John Cena. And then John Cena takes off his shirt and then he delivers an attitude adjustment and leaves Grayson Waller land in the middle of the ring, pretty much. And then we have a new women's money in the bank champion. Uh, we have a new women's, well, I say women's money in the bank champion. Uh, we have a new women's money in the bank. And her name is Eo Sky. She defeats uh, Becky Lynch, Selena Vega, Bailey, Trish Stratus, and so it starts to become Miss Money in the Bank. Now, they did make a mistake and call, tell us that Bailey was representing the Judgment Day when that wasn't true. This was a mistake that the announcer made while announcing Bailey when she came out. It was I was laughing low key, but the money in the bank brief uh briefcase belongs to damage control as Yo Sky become the superstar to climb the ladder and secure the life changing contract as she can use on a champion of her choosing. So, she hasn't chose a championship yet. I'm hoping that she cashes in on Oscar. Or I'm hoping she cashes in on, uh, obviously, who's the women's champ? I'm hoping she cashes in on, uh, Judgment Day member, uh, Rhea Ripley. But some people are saying, oh, she doesn't deserve to cash in on her. I think she should cash in on Oscar. Obviously, those are good two. Those are two good champions right now. Obviously, so I cannot wait to see who she chooses. This is some of the proof. Honest, honestly, this was what happened in the women's money in the bank match. So we had the team of WWE Hall of Famers, uh, WWE Hall of Famer Trish Stratus and Zoe Stark. Zoe Stark isn't in the WWE Hall of Fame. What, what were they saying? What were they saying right there? That's weird. She's not in the Hall of Fame. I doubt that. So, um, dominated the field early, but unpredictably, uh, the match allowed the other super, superstars a little that threatened and continue battling for the contract. So, pretty much right there, as you can see, you saw a little bit of uh, what was going on with Zoe Stark and uh, so it started, she did really well in this Money in the Bank match. This is one of her first Money in the Bank matches. I think for Trish Stratus, I don't know if this is her first or this is her second. I don't know. I don't know a lot of history about uh, Trish Stratus because I don't watch WWE when Trish Stratus was uh, wrestling way back then. So we had uh, um, Selena Vega come out with UK flags, high-five high, high in the uh, UK crowd. And then we had the action quickly uh, develop into a free fall. I saw Becky Lynch hit Trish Stratus with a manhandle slam on a ladder. And Selena Vega connected for a malicious code red on Stark on a ladder and the ladders didn't break by the way they didn't break in any of these matches the men's or the women's unfortunately after Bailey cost sky a chance at the contract the genius of the sky returned the favor by handcuffing Bailey and Lynch to each other through the uh, Rugs, runs, or racks, or some. I don't know what they, what they say. Allowing herself to climb the ladder. On, on something. I don't know what they mean. Un, to become Miss Money in the Bank. So, right there, 
EO Sky handcuffed. Um, so Bailey cost her own teammate the briefcase at first. We thought it was over. And then she gets handcuffed by EO Sky to none other than her, I, I wouldn't say friend, but they were friends. They were friends. They were friends uh, years ago, and she gets handcuffed to Becky Lynch, and then there, I believe they get handcuffed to the ladder. Is that right? Or did they get handcuffed to each other? I don't. I don't know exactly. But after that, we had the World Heavyweight Champ Seth Rollins defeat Finn Balor. The World Heavyweight Championship remains with Seth freaking Rollins after a clutching, after a grueling match against the Judgment Day's Finn Balor. So, Rollins was in, clearly, he wasn't 100%, obviously. As he was still favored favoring his injury and selection suffered at the hands of Balor over the past weeks a few weeks I'm out a few weeks over the past few weeks as the champ clutch through through the pain Senior Money in the Bank, Damian Priest appeared at ringside and his pres present caused a different distraction, distraction for his teammate. So, Damian Priest actually came out during this match thinking that he was going to cash in. Everyone was thinking he was going to cash in on uh, Steph or Finn, but there were some rumors going around he already said on the mic that he was going to cash in on Finn, but I believe he was. But I believe since uh, Damian Priest has the briefcase, there's some rumors going around that Damian Priest is leaving Judgment Day. And he's going to turn face very soon. He's going to leave, and that's going to be the end of the story. I believe I saw some pictures where Damian Priest was... Uh, Staring at uh, Finn Balor, and Finn Balor wasn't really happy with the fact that he came out and distracted his own teammate. He didn't really appreciate this, but this is what really happened. So we had uh, with, with uh, Balor potentially closing in on a victory as he prepared to go for the coup de grace. Priest rose from his chair at ringside, causing Balor to. I don't know what to say. I believe he fell off the top rope or missed his coup de grace or whatever. And then this is what happened. So he hits his coup de grace and he misses. He didn't hit it, but Seth Rollins hit the curb stump on. Uh, Balor, and then he wins the match one, two, three, and then still the world heavyweight champion Seth Rollins. So I obviously knew that Seth Rollins was going to win, regardless of what the case was in this match. But Balor went airborne for the se uh, seconds later, and then we uh, Rollins moved out of the way. Hits the stump, hit the stump for the victory, leaving Balor and Priest to argue at Reese. So, Damian Priest and Finn Balor were arguing at ringside. They were pissed off at each other, obviously. obviously. So, moving on to the final match, we have the Usos beating Roman Reigns and Solo Sokoa in the Bloodline Civil War. Obviously, you're probably like, the Usos beat Roman Reigns? How? How? I'll read and tell you. So, 
with the bloodlines drawing and the bloodline civil war in full effect jimmy and jay Uso walked out landed as victorious in the battle amongst family the crowd was unkind to the undisputed wwe uh, champ but that didn't stop roman reigns in solo sokoa from inflaming an account of pain and a an incredible account of pain onto their formal bloodline teammates at the Usos battle reigns the referee immersed got hit and caused the match to be without an official moments later with the referee back in the match reigns in solo combined to hit to hit Jay with a spear Samoan spike combo but both Usos kicked out after Reigns stacked him so he stacked him basically how he did at a backlash he stacked his opponents like he, how he did a backlash and then this is how he always won the match so this is how he did i believe it was five what was the match at um i don't know if y'all know this match or not but this is how this is how he did his opponents at backlash they were not the usos though they were different opponents by the way keep that in mind so this uh, this is this was the way that roman has always tried to find a way to win the match but therefore roman didn't uh win the match he was surprised and then they kicked out it too after that they kicked out it was it was those did so after uh solo crashed through a table reigns was all alone and the usos took advantage by using the incredible tandem offense after after a furious flurry of moves jay Soaked through the London skies with an Uso splash, become became the first superstar to pin race in more than three and a half years while also winning the bloodline silver war. So Therefore, that is everything y'all need to know about this money in the bank pay-per-view. So, it was an amazing pay-per-view, but on the last match, I fell asleep. Unfortunately, I didn't see what happened with the last match. So, I ended up watching the highlights back, and I was very, very, very happy. Some people said the Usos were going to win anyway. I said the Usos, I didn't let my, I didn't let my uh, mind out on the Usos winning, but... It was a heavy favor for Roman Reigns and Solo Sokoa to win, but unfortunately, that did not happen. This favorite for me is a 10 out of 10, but I think that uh, LA Knight should have won, but some people think that uh, LA Knight doesn't need the briefcase. Now, the reason uh, Damian Priest won is because at the last pay-per-view, he got beat by uh, Bad Bunny, pretty much. And then that's what caused him to win this briefcase. And uh, and just um, the, maybe the company is allowing him to finally get a chance of winning some gold. And I'm um, guessing WWE's like, you do us a favor, and we do you a favor, and we make sure you get a chance at the Money in the Bank briefcase. But there's a lot of people that think LA Knight should have won. But I don't think LA Knight needs the briefcase to get pushed or do any of that in the future. But honestly, that is the entire, that is my 
Money in the Bank reviews and my reaction to the entire pay-per-view from start to finish. Unfortunately, I couldn't stream this, but these are my late reviews and uh, reaction. So, obviously, the pay-per-views already happened yesterday. Obviously, you guys know what to do. Subscribe, like, share, click the bell, and please check out all the important links in the description down below. If you enjoyed, please leave a comment. Please do me a favor and... How do you feel about the winners at the Money in the Bank? How do you guys feel about all the opponents at WWE Money in the Bank? Leave a comment down below. How you guys feel? Do you guys feel that LA Knight should have won? Do you feel that EO you know, Scott should have never won the women's briefcase? The women's Money in the Bank briefcase? What do you think? Let me know in the comments what you think about all these matches. Do you think Roman should have won? Roman and Solo is coach you want. Or are you happy with the Usos? Or are you happy with Jey Uso being the first one to pin Roman Reigns about maybe maybe three in a, in a half half of a year? Half of, half of a year or whatever. But let me know how you guys feel about that. Do you think Roman is going to uh, put his title on the line against Jey Uso? At uh, SummerSlam Detroit, what do you guys think? Leave comments what you think. But anyways, you guys, I'm out. Thank you for watching Heavy After the Game. Hopefully, guys, you enjoyed my WWE uh, Money in the Bank 2023 late reviews and reaction with your boy and host, Heavy Infinite. Thank you for watching, everybody. Take care of guys. Enjoy. Uh, and guys, one more thing. I do not know when this video is coming out. If it comes out today, do not be surprised. If it doesn't come out today, I have it out for you guys Monday on July the 3rd, or I have it out on July the 2nd. Yes, 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 guys, got it for y'all. But anyways, I'm out. Thanks for watching.